Um, okay, so everyone sent me some really uh, quite quite strong uh, photographs, and let me just. Uh, so actually, um, so I'll just kind of um, uh, share share some of my thoughts. So when it comes to um, and you know, feel free to to write down notes and stuff like that when we're looking through the photographs. So um, one one uh, one thing I actually recommend is a small thumbnail test. So the, the, the general gist of the small thumbnail test is when you actually look at your photos as small thumbnails, you can actually get a better sense of which compositions are really, really strong. So, you know, we're all collectively looking at, um, you know, all of our own photos together. So just quick question for everyone. Um, what are some of the, the photos that really pop for us? And actually, uh, another tip, you could do this on your iPad or your iPhone. You could do the screenshot function, press the home button and the power button at the same time. And by doing a screenshot, we could slide photos that look as small as them. So uh, all of us feel free to just speak out loud. What are some uh, photos that really kind of pop out to us? Bottom middle. This one? Yeah. All right, what else? Yellow shoes. Mm -hmm. What else? How about the leg with the tattoos on it towards the top? Absolutely. I, I'd already spoken up, but I, I want to speak. That one really draws my attention. Mm. Let's choose one more. I like the woman looking up at the sky. Woman looking up this one. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, um, so I'll just I'll just continue. All right. So, this is actually the interesting thought. So. The, the, the general gist of the small thumbnail test is if you can look at your photos as small compositions, as small thumbnails, and they look strong as small thumbnails, they're also likely going to look really good as uh, big images. So even if you look at these photos, you could see this nice composition here that's well balanced, um, a lot of negative space here, that's good. Lady with the orange things, you've got this reflection here. You see all these kids jumping and stuff like that. That's really good. Also, like this New York photo here, and you got the American flag. And actually, all the, actually all the photos that everyone here sent actually do look, in my opinion, look really good as um, as uh, small thumbnails. So let's just kind of go through these um, just uh, kind of one by one. All right. So um, one also this one nice tip I like is um, I like this tool on the iPad. It's also on the iPhone. It's called Procreate. So you could just do the share button and send it to Procreate. And this is a new technique that I've been doing to kind of trace my images and um, kind of try to analyze my compositions. So all of us just collectively, let's, let's kind of share, what are some of the details everyone here likes? I like her arm a lot. Mm -hmm. The bend in her arm in the shadow. Mm. What else does everyone else like? The round shape of the manhole cover. Mm, so the round, the the round shape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like the face tattoo on of uh, I forgot his name. <laughs> Larry David. Yeah. Dude, why would you ever get Larry David's face tattooed? Oh, you're like that seems like bad life decisions. <laughs> Eric, after I took the photo, he actually Googled that. And it's a thing on the internet. People oh, get really? David tattoos. Yeah. Oh my God, that is so <laughs> hilarious. That is, but then, oh, that's, that's, well, I guess the good thing is that you don't really, you don't see that tattoo because other people can see it. That's so funny. All right. Where are some other details everyone likes? 
the, the position of her legs relative to each other mm. in terms of one is shadowed and one is in the light, but also the you can tell that they're forming an angle. You oh, okay. Fully see the angle. Mm hmm Other small details I really like, and this is actually where it's nice to um, to really just kind of sit at a photo and just kind of meditate on it. Um, this is so. This is a sign of a good composition where the more you look at it, the more small details that you see, which you actually uh, end up really liking. I like the swoosh in the Nike, the swoosh here, stuff like that. And actually, I think this is a nice detail. Um, kind of how the manhole cover also creates kind of this visual repet uh, representation, uh, repetition and stuff like that. So yeah, I think this is a sign of a, a very good composition. And this is also a pro tip too. So in order to make better composition, always check the corners. If the, co while you're, com you can also do this while you're composing. If you look, you're shooting a photo and you check the, the corners of a composition, if the corners of a composition look good, um, the, 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 the rest of the composition is also going to uh, likewise uh, feel good because I think typically the big mistake that a lot of us photographers make is let's say you're shooting a kind of photo like this. If there's too much crap here around the edges, it doesn't allow you to really focus in on the center of the frame. So I think the, the composition is very good. And also one fun thing I like to do is a, this is the reason why I like this Procreate app. You could just kind of hide everything. So now we kind of get a better sense of the composition, right? So certain things that I really do like is um, you could just kind of look at the composition and you're like, wow, there's actually really nice details in the bottom right corner. There's that circle, the repetition, the shadows. So um, basically if I could just kind of uh, deconstruct this image um, myself. Um, what makes strong compositions is like a combination of shapes. So we kind of got a circle here. Um, we also have, you know, somebody mentioned the kind of the diagonal angle of the legs and also because it's a human leg that looks very interesting. Also the shadow is very interesting too because it makes the photo a little bit more surreal. Um, we, all, we all know that in actuality it is certainly a human being's shadow. And so if you just like really made the composition uber, oh look, looks like you got a Matisse here. <laughs> so, so even if you just look at the, the composition super basic and then we could just kind of pinch out and look at a super small thumbnail, <laughs> you can actually see that the composition and the balance of shapes and forms. So it's, I think a, a great composition. It's, it's kind of a combination of, um, differentiation and variety of uh, shapes, but also kind of different, um, different directions and forms and stuff like that. Yeah, I think, yeah, this is, the, this is definitely the, an uber strong uh, photograph. Okay, so I actually really like this photograph too. So um, tell us, uh, everyone speak out loud. Feel free, uh, say why, why do you like, uh, why do you like this photograph? I like the fact that all of the divers are frozen exactly at the same height above the water in um, sort of a posture all looking down at the water. It just everybody snagged at exactly the same moment. Hmm. And then they're all kind of like in the same position, uh huh? Where are some other small details you guys you guys like? So this was this is my photo and uh -huh. I, I took up I don't know, probably a couple hundred photos of these kids jumping off the dock repeatedly. Oh, nice. I asked them if it was okay. They were sort of early teens. Mm -hmm. And this particular photo, what, what I like to, in terms of selecting one is that none of them are overlapping with each other, hmm. which is hard to get in a jump scene like that. And then I liked the dark water in close and it was a super bright, it was sort of a weird day in terms of the brightness the water was really bright and reflective, but it was sort of hazy out. Mm. And so the water was super bright, but there's sort of a dark line behind them and they're jumping into the brightness. 
that that part of it was what drew me to it that and that they're not overlap oh so well that's that's a, that's a good thought that like um, the back of the scene is actually quite dark and then the the front of it is a lot brighter so there's kind of this contrast or a play between the lights and the brights like they're yeah. jumping into the light like from yeah. the dark they're jumping into the light mm, they're jumping into the light Ooh, so <laughs> this is where we can kind of get artsy fartsy <laughs> how can you how can you interpret this metaphor about childhood or adolescence <laughs> i like the tension well, what kind of, what kind of tension? You know, it's just the it's like it's like it's kind of like pulling you towards you know the fact that it's sort of like jumping off. You, you almost feel like like the gravity, the water is like sucking you down. You know. Oh. Yeah, I I do like that. That like um, there's a sense of uh, gravity. Um, and actually, uh, Seth mentioned a really good point. So this is just like pro tip about when you're photographing. Um, multiple subjects um and you you did a good job and a good job shooting a lot of photos it's always better to shoot more than less that you always want a little bit of separation between the subjects typically if you have um overlapping subjects it typically doesn't work as well so you could see that based on the composition having like this little critical negative space in between is really important because if Okay, so this this is just me thinking, just um, talking about um, compositional theory. If your subjects are overlapped, like stacked on top of each other, it flattens the perspective. However, if there's separation between the subjects, it adds depth to the photographs. Um, and so, um, and also, uh, I think uh, a good uh, a good thing that Seth did really so. Um, this is this is a thought. So, the difference between uh, a good photographer and a great photographer is a good photographer might shoot like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 photos of the scene and just choose the best one. But a great photographer might shoot 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 photos of the scene. And that's actually the, the, the biggest thing that I learned too. So, um, John, you said you like Trent Park, right? Do you know that famous photo of the, um, the people by the bus, by the, the, the sunlight? Yeah. yeah, I think it took him like six months or something. To... So there's this famous photograph, um, Trent. Trent scene. So there's this like really famous photograph he shot. Yeah, this is, this is the, the photo, right? Mm -hmm. He literally shot a hundred rolls of black and white film to get that one shot. A hundred rolls of film. Do you guys, do you guys know how much film that is? Or photos? A ton of money. Yeah. So, I mean, this is just like a personal question to everybody is um, like, how bad do you want it? Um, and this is really important because you you have the like you don't really have the power to always be making the world's greatest photos, but so this is a really important idea because you don't always have the power to get the great shot, but you have the power to put in more effort and to click more. So if you see a really great scene that you're absolutely in love with. You know, you're shooting digital too. There's really no downside to shooting extra photos except you have to call through them. So I would actually encourage you to shoot like 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 photos. Who knows, even a thousand photos. And actually a very small practical tip that has actually helped me for my uh, workflow. I Nowadays, all I do is I shoot small JPEG because, you know, I'll just put on a nice filter that I like, you know, high contrast black and white or, you know, cross uh, process color. And also by shooting a small JPEG, it allows you to shoot like way more photos and there's less hesitation because the big, the big issue that, you know, let's say if you're shooting raw, you know, A, the camera buffer might not be able to, to keep up and B, importing photos is such a pain in the ass. So if you actually want to make better compositions, just kind of um, 
uh, shoot shoot more photographs, right? So, um, oh, so whose who's photo is this? Uh, that's mine. Right. So, um, what do what do we what do we like about this photo? Man, the color contrast on this one, bravo, man, John, this is gorgeous. I I I also I think John did a good job of finding um, a pretty model. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so um, talk, uh, Toby, talk about the, the colors you see. Well, I mean, the colors grab my attention. I mean, I think the French talk about seduction insofar as being charming. Mm. The definition of charming is anything that makes your attention linger longer. Mm -hmm. uh, so like the, you've got the leading lines there that kind of pull me towards her and the colors kind of make me linger on her and she's clearly exercising a great deal of effort, you know, uh, in, in doing several things at once. She got the coffee, she's smoking, and she's texting somebody. Um, Ooh, what, 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 what brand is this? Do we know what brand this is? Tim Hortons. Oh, yeah. Good old Timmy's. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, and she got the rain boots on on a sunny day, and there's no water in that scene at all. You know, it's like there. What's cool about this is that there is so much story here, and you'd miss it without your good composition skill. Um, and then, a sort of like, you know, like I am, I am drawn into a story. Whereas, if if you'd taken it, uh, you know, if a noob had taken it, uh, you know, without the leading lines and the color contrast, I, I might miss the the narrative here, which is just a, a contrast of feelings and and uh, and effort. So let, let let's break down the colors. So what colors does Everin uh, see here? So there's the yellow boots and the red cup, but I actually really like the red and the reflection. I think that yeah. makes the image really a lot stronger. Agreed. Yeah, totally. So you mean this? Yeah, I think that red in that ref in the window adds a lot to the image. Mm. This this one, this guy right here? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. What are some of the other colors we like? I like the color of her hair and nails. Oh, so um, one thing I'm actually doing, guys, so in Procreate, if you push and hold the, you know, color wheel, you could actually steal or you color sample the, the color. Um, so the color of her hair and what else? The nails. So you just push and hold. Okay, we got a nice nail here. Nice nails here, nice nails here, nice nails here. All right, cool. What else? What else do we like? To contract to that black purse against, you know, the red coffee cup and the black purse. Hmm. It makes it pop. Do you think she coordinated her coffee and then the, the purse? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not intentionally. <laughs> It's interesting that like normally when you're taking a female figure photo, uh, the figure would would pop out. But the fact is that her dress color blends right into the concrete. So the yeah. things that you would normally find interesting are actually taken from you. You're actually, you have to find, you know, interest in other places. Oh, that's, that's, that's interesting. Um, huh. So, I mean, this is where, this is a good example too of, um, well, so I look at the photo, what I really love is kind of the, so this is actually really, really critical to make um, a great photograph is because you had her in the decisive moment of taking a puff, that's what really kind of makes uh, the shot. Because if her arm was just pointing downwards, it wouldn't actually be as dynamic. And so even one thing I think about visually is the fact is that when she's smoking, her arm turns into um, a V-shape. Mm -hmm. And typically, a V-shape is much more, a V-shape is actually much more uh, engaging and edgy than if it was um, otherwise. If she didn't, if she wasn't smoking, her arm would just be down here. 
which would be fine too, but that is much more dynamic than that. So, and also the reason why um, that's good too, because it creates a triangle shape when people's arms are like that. And triangles tend to be much more interesting than just straight lines. Cause sometimes when people's arms are just down, it just makes kind of like a straight line. So what my, one of my encouragements is whenever it comes to any type of composition or whatever, just ask yourself like what's more dynamic. So did any, any of you guys ever watch like Wiley E. Coyote and the Roadrunner when you guys were kids? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. What is that thing that the coyote always likes to use? The, the rubber band. Yeah, the rubber band, or what is that? What is this thing? The dynamite? Yeah, it's dynamite, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. So when you look at your photos, think about like what, uh, so the word dynamic and dynamite is the same word. Dynamos, it means kind of like action, life, movement dynamic movement is a, a way you could think about it. And so what's really great about this photo is you've taken a still photo and it's very dynamic. So if we could look at the, the layers one by one, right? We had all these nice leading lines, which kind of you know, directs attention to the subject. And also all the primary colors in this photo are very interesting too, because it kind of takes your eyes around the frame. And then, so, you know, your eyes go from, you know, the, the boots to this, to that reflection to her hair. And to me, the really, the cherry on top is kind of this play of the, the blue and the, the yellow because blue and yellow are um, complementary colors on the, the color wheel. So even what you can see is um, in this Procreate app, you can see the, the yellow is polar opposite to the color of blue. So if you think about color theory, this is yellow and this is blue. Yellow and blue, these are polar opposites. Similarly speaking, kind of like, like a, you know, you kind of get like red and cyan or like you think about like kind of Christmas colors. So even one thing about the color theory, Think about what are the colors on the opposite sides of the color wheel. And so therefore, as a consequence, your eyes dart from this spot to this spot, to this spot, to that spot. And it seems like this kind of circular notion of the more you get your, 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 your viewer's eyes to kind of dart around the frame, uh, typically the better. And if I just filled in all the random layers about this image that we drew, it's actually like, yeah, I think it's a, a great composition because the more you look at the photo, the more interesting and intriguing it becomes. Yeah, this is this is a very, very, very good photo. All right, and also it helps that she's pretty. All right, good. So, uh, uh, all right, whose photo is this? It's mine. All right, so um, for those of you guys who chose this photo, why do you guys like this photo? Um. What allowed it to, uh, to pop? I like the fact that it um, is uh, an unusual pose uh, mm. for someone. I also like the fact that there's a lot of negative space on the left-hand side of the photo. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also drawn to the fact that um, even though I expect her to be looking up because of all the negative space there and the attitude of the head that she's actually looking down. Hmm. Interesting. What position is her chin? It's sort of tilted and uplifted. Hmm. And so let's also take a look at some of the small details. Look at the, the whites of her clothes. What, what, what kind of shapes do we see? A lot of triangles. 
Yeah. Triangle. Uh -huh. Triangle. Triangle. And then um, what is that thing in the, the middle of her shirt? What are these? Buttons. Mm -hmm. So this is actually really nice. This is uh, to Toby's point. This is almost like beats and music. Uns, 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 uns. Right? So th that's why I actually really, it's, it's actually interesting because I think the most primal form of music is actually music because you think about the human heartbeat and you also think about um, apparently when things, <laughs> this is a funny thought, when things rhyme or when things are said to be in unison, they seem more truthful. <laughs> so when in doubt, throw it out or, you know, stuff like that. And also what I really like about this photo is, um, so there's this word I like, it's called, you guys heard of it? Arabesque. You guys ever heard this word, arabesque? Ballet term, like a dance term? Ooh, yes. So describe it. Actually, <laughs> that's as much as I, I can think of like, like maybe a jump, uh, like a jump and a flutter with the feet. Which I, I'm, I'm not actually a trained dancer and I'm not paying enough attention to my daughter's dancing to. Oh, uh, <laughs> pay more attention, bad dad. Yeah, okay. yeah I'm, I'm, I will admit that. Okay, so this is actually a, a quite a good arabesque. Hmm. So, oh, sorry, so let's, so the, the, the human, okay, this is, this is also just a, a thought. There's nothing more beautiful than the human form. And all art, I think, stems from humans, whether it be human voice, human rhythm, or also just human body. So what, what kind of shapes and movements and uh, compositions do you see in this dancer's pose? Well, it's like a Y. It's kind of like a Y, uh huh? Mm -hmm. Well, there's sort of multiple triangles that are formed and they're connected by a curve. Mm. Where do you see the curve? The curve is her body and her legs form a triangle and her arms form a triangle. Oh, by the curve of her body. Oh. Lots of triangles, yeah. Lots of triangles, right? So the, if you go on uh, Wikipedia or the search arabesque, right? So the general gist of arabesque, this is so funny, the, the word arabesque, it literally means like Arab, like Middle Eastern Arabic. Ask is like kind of, you know, like, so essentially, you know, when the Westerners first went to the Middle East, they looked at all these kind of patterns and they're like, whoa, we, you know, backwards Europeans have never seen anything as beautiful. Oh, also, oh, um, uh, John, you've been inside the, 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 the epic mosque. Yeah, mm -hmm. mosque. So, if you so actually, I think um, truth be told, yeah, this is a good example too. Middle Eastern art, I actually think, is far superior to Western European art. And the great thing about the arabesque, the general gist is having lots of curves and motions and shapes and forms is actually more beautiful. And this is also this is one of my favorite pieces too because. Um, Westerners, we're all about symmetry, right? Um, a lot of other cultures, they don't believe in symmetry. They actually be, believe in asymmetry. That's not symmetrical, yet it's still balanced because this little thing here and this thing here and this thing here, it's all really well balanced as a composition, but it's not just the whole standard, like, you know, you know you, you'll see this a lot on like Flickr or Instagram. It's just like centered composition, balanced on each side, which I think tend to be a little bit boring. So the general gist is a really good composition, tends to be like really intertwined and very kind of uh, complex in terms of the, 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 the presentation. So essentially the more curves you have, the better. So taking it back to this photo, the reason I like it is my immediate reaction is I could see the curves or the arabesque in terms of the composition like this. And once again, it's not really a science, but then this is kind of the, the general gist or the feeling that I get. Because um, 
even if you think about her arm placement, one one arm is essentially like curved like this. And then her other arm is curved kind of like this. And then her head and her face shape, her body is kind of like this too. So if we just kind of created this photo into an abstract, yeah, it's like a very, ooh, Jose, use, use, a, use a great visual artist. Um, so you can just kind of see, it's like, a, it looks like a, a nice abstract painting. Um, another pro tip. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know if a composition is good or not, what you could often even do is invert the photo. So mm -hmm. now that we've inverted the photo, you could actually kind of get a better sense of the composition, right? Like now, you know, obviously we have a little alien frame, right? It's a little bit easier when you invert the photo that you could see, you know, the compositional elements. Oh, also the interesting thing, have you realized when you invert it, you can actually see the outline of her clothes a little easier too. So as a, as a pro tip, when you guys are analyzing your own uh, compositions, you know, whether you use this in Procreate or Photoshop or whatever tool, kind of invert the photo to check the composition. Uh, another, another pro tip, uh, there's another tool that they have in uh, Procreate and they also have this in Photoshop. It's called Gaussian Blur, G-A-U-S-S-I-A-N Blur. And what you could do is you could blur the photo until a point where it kind of doesn't look like an image, but you still kind of see something. So here, so let, let's say we blurred it like this, right? So what are, what are the bright parts of the frame? Face. So the face, right? Face, the collar, yeah. The hands. The face and the collar. And the hands. And the hands, right? So the collar here, and then the hands here. So this is actually another interesting term that we could learn from uh, painting too, is I think they call it like, um, I think they call it tone or, oh no, they call it value. Yeah, value. So value, V-A-L-U-E. It essentially like, you know, on your iPhone, you can make it brighter or you can make it darker. <laughs> um, so the value of a photograph is how bright or dark is the frame? So if we're looking at this photograph, once again, with the, the Gaussian blur effect of, uh, affected, where is the highest value? Our face. The highest value? Yeah. And then we can even use the color picker tool, right? You can see that's much brighter, right? And where's like, and then, you know, it's, the, the face, and this is, and this is a theory too. The reason why humans could tell, can notice a human, another human face like almost a mile away. I think the human mind almost has an algorithm where we could actually look at the proportions of a human face and the skin tone or whatever, even at distance and identify as a human face. Even what you could do is after the Gaussian blur, you also invert it again. So you could even see as a small image, you're like, oh, okay, like generally the gist of this photo if I just really abstracted it, right? You kind of have a dot here. You know, the neck here. You know, this thing here. And you also kind of have like another thing here. Well, so yeah, so even like even look at this composition from a distance, it's actually um, a really, really lovely image. Good job, Jose, you're the ultimate abstract artist. Okay, so um, Okay, so looking at this photo, so uh, John, which one is your favorite photo of your, your own pictures? Uh, me? Or yeah. Uh, 
I guess the square one in the middle where uh, above the yellow car. This one? Yeah, that's one of my... Okay. This one, this one's very nice. Did you shoot this in Chicago? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? It looks like, it looks like by the market. <laughs> all right, so... Um, so let's all let's all take a look at this photo. Okay, so what are all the nice small little details we see that we like? I like a lot of the gestures. There are so many gestures in this photograph. The woman with the hand on the child's head, the other child holding up the uh, the uh, piece of fabric, whatever it may be. The uh, child immediately to his right looks like he may be reaching out. Um, the uh, girl behind, uh, the one you just made in red, the hand there is doing something as well. There's a lot of action here in the mm. gestures, and I really like that in this photograph. Mm. So lots of action. Where do you guys see the curves? Well, if you take the mother's arm, clearly that's a curve, the one that's holding the baby. Mm -hmm. uh, the leg of the child uh, sitting on the step that looks like it's in camouflage pants definitely is a curve. Mm -hmm. um, the, in the left-hand corner of the frame, the spine of the boy that's holding up the lace and his head and his whipping around his head is a is a curve. Mm. So the curves sort of bracket the image. Mm. The, the curves bracket the image. I, I like the idea. And then, okay, so another thought. So um, take a look at what direction everyone is looking and we could draw vectors or arrows. So what, what direction is everyone looking at? Everybody seems to be drawn to the center or maybe the the Fibonacci center uh, and you know it's not the dead center but you know it's, it's off center a little bit um, but every everybody yeah exactly right there hmm. it's everybody's kind of looking towards that point except for the little boy he's uh, kind of looking off yeah yeah and this kid's looking this way mom's like looking this way baby's looking this way so this is actually very interesting because um, so this is actually one thing I think about a lot, a lot in composition where this is kind of more of a photo theory thing where if we really analyze compositions, first just ask yourself, what direction is everyone looking? And you could just track the eyes, right? Looking this way, looking this way, kids looking this way, mom's looking this way, kids looking this way. And then the kids look in this way, and then you just make everything black. So, <laughs> not not to bring back any childhood nightmares. Do you guys ever remember doing big, uh, vector addition and subtraction in uh, trigonometry or geometry? Vaguely, <laughs> mm, Bl blocked from my mind. <laughs> right. So I'll just um, I'll be the I'll be the asshole teacher. Okay. So. So generally the gist is, you see all these arrows here, they're all kind of pointing to this central focal point here. So it actually kind of cancels out the vector movement. Um, and here, it's moving here and here and here. So if you think about it visually, the movement is kind of like that. And so this becomes interesting because the more collisions, like think about, okay, I think about visual atoms. In a photograph, the more collision, the more confrontation, the more movement there is, the better. And so if I look at this photograph, it's, it's, a, it's a really great photograph because um, the more you look at it, the small details are nice. And then you could go as granular as you want, because like even the mom, right? If you look at the hand, 
that creates certain shapes, right? Um, you know, other small details I like is, you know, mom's toes peeking out. Um, you know, this kid, his arms here, this little thing that's moving here, the girl, you know, playing, doing something here, very focused. Even small details that you don't notice until later. All these little dots on her shirt are really excellent because like you, if you think about like music, right? Like having a bunch of uh, dots are good. And yeah, like it's just, it's just great too. Like, cause um, how many subjects do we have in the frame? And also the nice thing too, is if you look at this abstractly, all the heads actually have pretty good um, separation in the frame. That's also another thing you could do, just draw circles over the heads. So you can see that there's actually good separation between, um, there's actually good separation between all of these heads. And that, that's, that's a really a good thing because if all the heads were overlapped, it wouldn't be as engaging. Yeah, so yeah, like I would actually say, <laughs> it's so funny because I look at a photo like this, I'm like, they are not observing social distancing. Why isn't anyone wearing a face mask? <laughs> um, but yeah, I think uh, the, 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 the takeaway from this uh, photograph in terms of composition, the more people you have in a frame, it often adds much more magic to the photo. And then, um, and then one thing that you were saying too, John, was you wanted more emotions. And yeah, I think this is uh, a great photo. Cause I, I know that feeling. <laughs> And something that a lot of people, I think, could uh, could relate to. Good job. All right. Um, and the frame. There's a frame within a frame. Ooh, which which frame in the frame? Well, the doorway. This one here? Yeah. The, that kind of draws your eyes to those hmm. people. Hmm. Yeah, really, really 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 great photo can you uh, so uh john are you allowed to travel back to istanbul right now or is it closed uh no yeah i, I could not a bad idea <laughs> all right um wait peter did we look at one of your pictures yet uh no all right so peter what's your favorite photo of yours your own the uh kids at the bar it's a. Uh, this one? It's, yeah. Oh, well, this one's a very good one. I don't know if it's the greatest, but the... I think it's a very good, oh, this is good because we could essentially jump, um, piggyback off of uh, John's image. Is it as fun to look at each other's photos? Yeah, I love it. All right. So this one is actually very interesting too. All right, so let, let, let's, first of all, there's uh, certain rules we could do, right? So let's take a look at all the interesting faces. So what are the interesting faces everyone here sees? Woman in the corner. Yeah, that's really interesting. What else? Guy above her and then the guy to the left, I mean, to the right of him and then the kid all the way on the right. And that's, it's a really great contrast in, in direction look on the, the people on the left, like the ones looking, you know, clearly it, it looks like about like maybe 8.30 or 8 o'clock and the gentleman above her is looking, you know, more towards, you know, maybe 3.30 or so. That, that contrast of look draws my attention to the left and I'm, I'm held there. Hmm. So this is actually super interesting. So, you know, the girl on the far right, what direction is she looking at? Which way is she looking? She's looking left, but it looks like she's looking out of the frame. Oh, okay. So like, she's almost looking like out of the frame. Uh -huh. And then uh, one element actually I really like is, I actually really think this is what makes it killer shot is, I call this a bookend, where it just kind of fills in this corner of the frame. So that's actually really important because it creates like a visual bookend mark here and it fills in the frame, so that's, that's, that's very good. So uh, does anyone here see the cleavage? <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh, wow. So these are so funny too, because like these are small details that you won't know until you really like can zoom in. Kind of nice, like this. This is actually interesting. Her nose, her lips. Got good old Samuel Adams here. And actually, one thing I actually really like about um, the this composition here too. Good job using the flash because it really kind of transforms the scene very interesting. And even something I love, I actually love the reflection of all these glasses here. Wait, so uh, can you tell us the story behind this photo? How you shot it? I'm sorry. Tell us the photo behind the. Uh, tell us the story behind the the photograph. It's in a um, venue where there's a. There's a stage to the left and a band playing and they have a bar. I could walk around the bar. And um, just the uh, people looking in different directions. I have another photo of two guys flanking the woman who's behind the beer dispenser. Uh -huh. um, uh, so, you know, looking down at her, mm. um, you know, sort of semi-exposed, mm. whatever. Oh, and, um, yeah. I did not put that on my website just because I don't, I don't know the woman. And, uh, uh, it was, it was a little bit, well, was she identifiable in the, that yes. Photo? In the other uh, one, she's smiling and, and oh, I see, I see. men are all sort of looking down at her uh, breasts. Well, I, I do like this version because because her face is obscured. Actually, mm -hmm. the irony is when you cannot actually see the face of people, it actually makes the photograph much more interesting because it becomes like a little bit more mysterious. Um, oh, and I think what's super killer in this photo is you see the woman in the bo bottom left of the frame Mm -hmm. how she's kind of looking out of the frame and also technically because this is the back of someone's head they're also kind of looking into the frame so if i could oh so this is another thought i always like to think about life outside of the frame and so you got this woman here right and the fact that she's looking here he's looking this way he's looking this way so there's 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 continuity or movement here but then she's kind of looking out of the it looks like a football playbook right and visually, we could imagine this is the backside of someone's head looking into the frame. And there's kind of this lady here. So visually, this photograph is extremely interesting. Um, like you could think about like all of the different movement through the frame. So if I could just kind of draw this out myself too, is uh, kind of this. The movement here, then her movement out here, this movement here, and this movement here. So yeah, like it's 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 it's. I, I think it's really fantastic to just think about. Um, and this is where it's good to have people at the. And this is actually my favorite part of the frame, because you have people on the extreme corners of the frame, and they're looking outside of the frame. It actually. Uh, ironically expands the image and also the direction of these guys eyes like it actually creates a little bit more um like the the vectors or the arrows and the movement of people are kind of bumping in together yeah really man you're 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 very good good job all right so man, i feel like we're all learning a lot right so then uh, toby which one's your favorite picture of yourself uh, of, of myself. Okay, so like, disclaimer, I am not a street photographer. I'm a portrait photographer. Uh, no, Toby, you are a street photographer. <laughs> uh, but like, so the way that I get around, um, you know, a lot of taking pictures is to just take pictures of myself. Mm. Um, uh, and um, so like the mine are the, the in the middle there, I've got the, the girl with the horn in the elevator that's, uh, I used a uh, a flash really like at full power uh, uh, my assistant was holding the flash in the oh, elevator oh nice uh, to try to like throw some light and and Ooh. show her contrast there oh I love it 
It's really uh, good. But again, this is not street photography. That's more commercially. Uh, and then uh, the other two are more selfies. I was trying to show the isolation of just practicing in the basement of Symphony Hall there. That's is that nope, you? Nope. Yeah, that is me actually. But that's oh, not nice. what I'm talking about. The, the one in the middle there, that's me oh. practicing. Um, and, you know, it just kind of showing that it's not all glamorous. Uh, and then uh, the one on the left was um, just, I was, uh, I was really sad one morning. Uh, and I, I kind of wanted to capture that. Um, again, like in, in all photography, I'm, I'm trying to go for a, a level of intimacy that is borders on uncomfortable. Yeah. So, um, I can't say that, I, I, honestly, I feel like this is the, the strongest photo uh that the one i'm most proud of but it's not as far as like leading lines or um attention uh to um composition it's really more trying to convey a feeling of uh kind of sadness and isolation mm -hmm. you know when you feel that that you know feelings that you kind of want to hide from mm -hmm. um so that's uh, yeah this well I, lo I, lo I love this photo because you can see how swole you are and you can see look at those monster traps man <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, how much can you deadlift? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't keep track. I do deadlifts, but I don't really keep track. Oh, good job. Okay. So <laughs> let's say all three, all of us, let's, uh, let's analyze together. So, um, so once again, we could do our little small thumbnail test. And um, if we just take a look at all three of those photos, um, what, what, what kind of... Uh, like the, uh, all of us, we can speak out. Let's listen. Let's 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 do a little vote, okay? So, which one does everyone think this is the best photo, or their personal favorite? So this is one, two, or three. All right, what does everyone say? One, three, only one. One and three. Let's say one. All right, cool. So I actually think you guys are all right too. Actually, I really, I, 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 I love this, this photograph. There's actually um, a photographer. His name is, uh, I like it. His name is Christopher Anderson. You can Google him, Chris Anderson. Um, he's actually one of, He's like, I think he's actually one of the best Magnum photographers. A lot of people don't know about him. But I, what I really love about this photo is the, the, it'll, like, the mood here is so good. And it's so genuine. And once again, Toby, don't, don't worry about the whole street photographer or whatever. Remember, you're not a photographer. You're a visual artist. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what I love about this photo is this is just dripping mood and emotion emotion so uh okay class all of us what are the details you guys like in this photo this is use of light and dark yeah hmm. I think they call it. so where do you see the light and where do you see the dark well the window behind him you know it's sort of over his right shoulder definitely there a little bit over his left shoulder as well but mostly over the right Mm. The composition is real nice too. It you know, kind of brings that out. And where do you see the dark? I think the I think the power of the dark, the dark is in the foreground. We're normally drawn to something that's bright or lighter, but in fact, in this case, the subject is darker and the background is bright. So mm. it sort of flips that that notion of what we're drawn to, and it forces us to sort of look at the picture for longer because mm. of that. Hmm. Yeah, like, uh, you know, actually, um, and this is this is for everybody, um, if you guys are all stuck in quarantine or whatever, I think selfie photo projects are probably the best photo project you can do because you cannot refuse yourself. Like, you, you can't piss yourself off by photographing yourself. And so even for myself, like, um, I've been doing a lot of selfies of myself, and it's been really useful because... Um, it's funny. I'm only I'm only 32 years old. And I'm like, shit. I'm getting old. Cause like I can I can see you know you know when you guys smile. Do you guys see the wrinkles in the side of your eyes? No. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My eyes aren't good enough anymore. Oh, okay. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, it, it, was, it was so bad because um, I was shooting a selfie of myself with like one of my Leica lenses and the lenses are super sharp. And I was able to see all of the facial imperfection. I'm like, wait, what happened to my baby skin? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm starting to feel my age. But then, um, but what I think was really powerful about this photo is um, it's, okay, so here we can add the Gaussian blur. So let's, let's do this together. So um, at what point does it look like a photograph? So tell me yeah. when, there? Yeah. Okay, so if you could look at the photo, um, what do you guys see? I see a person that's backlit. <laughs> no, it's good. So what we could do is um, we could push and touch the lighting. So we, oh, okay. So it's like this kind of light gray color. And we could actually paint in, this is where things get pretty cool. You could kind of paint in the color here. And then what else, what are some of the other colors or tones or shapes you see? How about the shoulder? The right shoulder, yeah. Right shoulder. So then we could kind of paint in the detail there. Right. And then uh, And also like um, the black here in the foreground. So you could paint in the black here, you could paint the black here, you could paint the black here, or vignetting there. Let's see if this works. Okay. So okay, so some ways you could think about this. Okay, so that is essentially kind of a pseudo abstraction of um, our very uh, handsome model. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you. And it's kind of interesting because once you're able to just kind of paint in all these different elements, then you could kind of get a better sense of like what the composition really is. And so I love it because it, it like, it's, it's, it's very clear that there's a human head because the, the shape of the head and the shoulders are actually quite um, prominent. So it's like it's obviously like the outline of a of a fit human being <laughs> good job and also the the light behind is quite unusual and uh, abnormal which is nice because it makes the photograph feel so much more dramatic um and so actually the, that's why i really really like about this photo is that i think it has like strong emotion and strong drama and just also from um you know, just kind of a, from a, a pragmatic perspective too, photos tend to be much more interesting when they're mysterious. So your, what you do with your hand is actually very nice. This is very nice. The fact that the glasses here, this here, the circle here, that's good. Um, and also, if you think about like um, the background with the light, it looks like piano keys. Ding, 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 ding. And then, um, and I think it was uh, Seth. You mentioned that the it's unusual that the the darkness is in the foreground. Yeah. So what what makes that unusual? Well, it's uh, it's not so much unusual. It's that usually our eyes are drawn to the bright part of the picture first, hmm. which they certainly are in this. But because the bright part is the background, hmm. that forces us to then and clearly isn't the subject It forces us to move back into the picture into the foreground and figure out what the what the picture is of hmm. so it's sort of opposite of what the rule of the rules around you know visual weight and stuff that you know the that our eyes are drawn to the brightest part and that's what we see first and then we may or may not look around the rest of the picture hmm. this sort of forces us back into the foreground because the bright is in the background hmm. I think. Yeah, I think that's what gives the photo power. Yeah. It's a very powerful photo. And I think that's part of the reason why. Yeah, actually, that's, that's also another thought, too. Strong versus weak. It's actually funny. Any, any of you guys lawyers or ever did the LSATs? Thankfully, no. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so one of the parts of them, so one of, my, one of my friends is currently studying the LSATs right now. And what one of the problem sets, it's all about strengthening versus weakening. So I don't like the notion of a good versus bad photo because like that doesn't really mean anything, but I do like the notion of um, a strong photo or a weak photo or composition elements which strengthen a photo versus weaken a photo. And I think what strengthens photo is the, yeah, like, you know, the, the light behind, um, it kind of goes opposite. Um, and also the, mis the mystery of the face. And also this is where the composition also is, is, is really good. So um, let me show you guys something. So there's this composition called the, the golden triangle. And the basic gist is, you know, you got a frame here. So let's say this, this is your frame. You, what you do is you draw a diagonal from one corner to the other corner. And then from this corner, you draw a perpendicular line here. And if we remember our high school geometries, this creates 90 degree angles, 90 degree angles, 90 degree angles, 90 degree angles. And then the upshot of all this is that the center of the focus is the here. So we all, we all learn like notions of rule of thirds, right? Rule of thirds is like, you know, something like that or whatever. But the reason why the golden triangle is superior as a technique is that it makes us, it forces us to just think about um, diagonals. And also if you think about the composition here too, we end up creating, by doing a composition like this, you create more triangles. Oh, whoa, you see that? This is us thinking outside the frame. And now through this composition, we've made a parallelogram. So actually one thing that I've been doing a lot for fun I've been actually Googling and downloading like, you know, introduction to geometry or, you know, textbooks, PDF. And I've actually been looking at a lot of these geometry books and it's actually been extremely informative to help me think more abstractly about compositions and shapes and forms and stuff like that. And that's why I think the, the cross pollination of different forms of art tend to be very, very interesting to make for much more dynamic compositions. Because at the end of the day, like, who, why does it matter if it's a photograph or if it's something else? Well, look at this, kind of a cool photo, right? <laughs> wow, I, this, I, I can't say I did this on purpose. I wish I did. That oh was... yeah, you totally did. I mean, also <laughs> the, the best artists are the best bullshitters. So you're like, yeah, I totally planned all of this. And actually, and actually this, this is the pragmatic thought 